One of the most beautiful parts about build crafting is that you'll oftentimes come across some really fascinating combinations that not only excite you, but really surprise you. And in this video, I'm gonna go over that much more with this Mask of Backers build. So, all that being said, if you wanna catch more new builds content on the channel, alongside more Destiny 2 content and sci-fi in general, then be sure as always to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get straight to the video. The blueprint focuses around none other than the Mask of Bacchus, which comes down to its armor perk, which states that while you have a stasis super equipped, your dodge becomes a longer range, faster moving shift that partially cloaks you during use. After shifting, your stasis and arc weapons deal increased damage for a short time. The beautiful thing here is that you're receiving a 4 times weapon surge boost, which, unlike most builds in the game, you only have access to 3 weapon surges, but Mask of Bacchus immediately gives you 4 the moment that you're able to utilize your class ability. And more so, that class ability makes you that much more swift and lethal thus making you really impactful on the battlefield. What I've done is I've added more to this overall build in the area of damage and utility. So we already have access to Stasis and Arc as our more notable damage options. But to really add more to the recipe, I've thrown in the Solar Weapon as alongside the Void Weapon Surges. So therefore we can take advantage of not only our cooldown when it comes to our weapon surge, but also once that cooldown is finished, we can then still have access to our solar and void weapon surges. So we're going to be taking advantage of the fundamentals, that being Dead Messenger, Hard Light, as well as Borealis. Now, these three weapons are really fantastic because for, for some time, they have had their use. But in this build, they really do shine because we now have access to all three elements simultaneously. What makes this great is that depending on the content that you're up against, you can swap off between your arc or your solar or your void respectively on that respective weapon, thus saving you all of the stress of having to always constantly look for a different option or your damage output. Furthermore, What's great about this is that it works really well into Prismatic. And Prismatic really helps to make the Mask of Backwards shine even more, all because now you have every irrespective element combined to therefore really gel things together, mold it all together into one piece. So why do I like this build a lot? Well, not only does it give you access to some of the more underutilized weapons, as I mentioned, with Dead Messenger and Borealis and the likes of hard light but it just gives you that extra cushion when it comes to damage output and that perhaps is the most important part you don't have to always rely so much on stasis for damage or arc for damage you can now swap off and utilize weapons that have solar as well as void giving you greater access to more options and thus when it comes to, let's say, things like Lost Sectors, where you have to deal with specific shields, let's say Arc Shields or Solar Shields or both, you have access to, again, Dead Messenger, Hard Light, or even Alexa Borealis, which can take care of those respective shields just by one click of a button. So that right there is just the starting point of this build. We're going to go into more detail as we move forward. But that being said, let's move on into the weapon section. When brainstorming weapons, I was thinking of things that really gave me immediate access to damage that also ramps up over time. So while the fundamental weapons are truly special in terms of adding more utility to the build, Mask of Bacra shines in both its arc and stasis weapon surge. So the star of the show, surprisingly enough, is Agra Scepter. And Agra Scepter's catalyst states that when you drain your super energy, you overflow the magazine and empowering the beam with bonus damage and the ability to slow and freeze targets until the magazine or super energy runs out or the weapon is stowed. 
What this means is that the moment you eat your super, you gain an immediate 80% damage increase on top of your four times weapon surge activation through class ability. And if you have other utility options, let's say you're rocking with a snare bomb, now you're adding weaken on top of the enemy, which gives you even more damage output. So Agar Scepter is an insanely potent machine that if you utilize it well, can be great. And most importantly here, the time frame that you activate your ability or at least your weapon surges is 10 seconds. So I'm looking for weapons that give me that immediate burst of damage for that 10 second window, thus giving me a chance to really maximize output and then swap off into my respective weapons to further maintain that consistency, which goes right back into having solar weapon surges and war weapon surges and also playing into the fundamentals because once that time frame runs out, I can swap off to another weapon and still have everything activated from my other respective elements, my void and solar, to therefore keep the damage pumping out. So other options include the likes of Wave Splitter, which I love a lot because it's void and it also amplifies in its damage and plays into my, my weapon surge alongside Cold Heart. Cold Heart also having a built-in intrinsic trait where it just amplifies in damage over time, thus giving it more potency for not only ad clearing, but also doing boss phases too. And then I mentioned, of course, the fundamentals. So we have Dead Messenger, you've got the likes of Hard Light, and then I've also thrown in a shotgun which I love a lot. The fourth horseman is also great because every respective shot you do, it amplifies in damage. So the pattern here is I'm looking for weapons that always give me a boost in damage over time. And fourth horseman is great for that. In your heavy slot, you got things like, you know, Whisper of the Worm, if you want to go for something in the solar category. You've got things like Line in the Sand. You've got Darcy. Darcy's surprisingly not that bad. It's of course, not going to be doing crazy amounts of damage like your other respective snipers out there, but you get the four times weapon surge activated for it. You're doing some decent damage. But overall, that's really where the grand scheme of weapons comes through. Just look for weapons that give you that instant access because you want to make use of that time frame that you have for arc and stasis. And then you can swap off to your respective void or solar options to therefore give you the extra cushion moving forward. So that being said, I'm going to go into more detail to really bring things all together and explain why everything is the way it is. So let's move on. Now that we have a good general idea of how the build operates from a weapons perspective, we're going to now dive deeper into the build to really get a closer look at how everything operates as a whole. So the caveat to kick things off is that this build is exclusively tied to the stasis super, and that's just because of the mask of Bacchus and how it works. So if you're not really a big fan of mask of Bacchus or just stasis in general, this may not be for you, but Tune in a little bit more and hopefully this might change your mind. So abilities wise, we are going with the snare bomb and grapple. Snare bomb most notably because of the weaken and disorienting targets. Weakening gives us that increased damage output, which as I mentioned earlier, plays well into the weapon surge that we activate through our class ability for arc and stasis, but also plays well into other respective surges such as void or solar, depending on what you're looking for. Grapple is always fantastic because it gives you that chance to play offensive and defensive, plus it drops tangles, which is always a benefit too. Aspects, these two will never leave. <laughs> these two will always be on my radar, and that's just because Spectre is really good. It's great defense, it's great offense utility, it pulls aggro off of you, thus giving you a chance to slow the pace down, reposition, maybe re-strategize your approach. And the same thing with Winter Shroud. It helps us slow down the flow of the engagement. And now that we're playing more into stasis, we have other weapons that can really help to freeze targets faster and thus apply more defensive plays. Next, we have faster protection. This, of course, as I mentioned in my other videos, is the go-to fragment to have because we're always going to be engaging in battle and thus you want to be able to resist as much damage as you possibly can. You pair that with the thing with other things like frost armor or galvanic armor via the hunter adrenal and you can see why this is really important. 
Next, we have the Fast of Devotion, where defeating targets afflicted with stasis or strand debuffs grants bonus light energy. This is perfect because we're always going to be utilizing things like our grapple or our aspects. And so, therefore, we can always have light energy being transmitted into transcendence, thus giving us really, really quick activity with transcendence grenades and our ability being refunded. It's always good to have that. And this plays into Facet of Awakening, where rapidly defeating targets with light or darkness damage or super final blows generates an elemental pickup of the matching damage type. So being able to utilize the fundamentals weapons is perfect here because we can swap off of our respective elemental categories and pick up different traces or not traces, but pick up different pickups. <laughs> that can give us different utility options. So for example, fire sprites can give us grenade energy, traces give us ability energy, void breaches give us class ability energy, shards give us melee energy, and tangles are just tangles. So in the grand scheme of things, this is really awesome because you can really funnel a lot of energy into your builds, thus giving you a nice consistent flow when it comes to engaging in battle. You're not having, you're not having to stretch yourself or worry too much about your energy being wasted and then we have facet of courage which your arc solar and void abilities deal increased damage to targets afflicted with darkness debuffs so this can re this can be applied to snare bomb but if you really wanted to you can swap off to something like knife trick or withering blade it all comes down to what you're looking for i just stuck with snare bomb because it's always nice and then next we have facet of purpose where in this case we're playing with the frost armor so we're always going to be activating that for every orb that we pick up and as you'll see very soon we have a lot of ways to pick up orbs so we're going to always have at least times four to times five frost armor every time we're engaging in battle and then lastly a facet of ruin which once again plays into the stasis play style where you're going to be freezing and shattering and this just gives you an overall increase in your burst for the aoe so now let's move into the armor mods and this is where things can get really really juicy here as well so as far as the mask itself we are rocking with three siphons we have the harmonic siphon arc siphon and void siphon most notably of course the stasis siphon and arc because we're always going to be utilizing those two respective weapons due to the times for weapon surge so the last slot here is really optional i've gone with void because void is a pretty strong class to be utilizing as far as weapons since the hunter's journal this season does really benefit void and so i've gone with that but of course it's up to you you can go with strand if you wanted or solar kinetic it's up to you next we've gone with the gauntlets i have heavy handed and firepower both of which provide orbs of power and since we're always going to be utilizing our melee or even just our grenades like, for example, the grapple just gives us an immediate instant access to our orbs of power. Next, we have the chest armor. Now, charged up is cool because it gives us the additional armor charge, which plays into extending the duration of time that we can utilize our weapon surges for our void or solar surges. So in the event that our 10 second time frame for our arc or stasis weapon surge is deactivated, we still have our charged up armor charges that give us a longer time frame to really still do damage and thus giving us a chance to replenish our class ability energy to therefore do the full rotation into four times weapon surge for arc and stasis. And then it's like a rinse and repeat. And then we have the concussive dampener, which is more for AoE of combatants. Next, we have the leg armor. And so this right here again is optional, but I do feel like it's important to have recuperation since you want to be able to replenish health. And since we're always constantly picking up orbs, recuperation is always going to be fantastic. But this right here, the weapon surges are all optional. This all pertains to what you're looking for as far as the build. You can go double solar, double void, even you, you could even put arc on here too just so that way when the cooldown is deactivated from your times four you still have your times one for your arc and your times one for let's say your stasis so again it all comes down to what you're looking for for me because we're playing into the fundamentals i wanted to have void and solar 
activated so therefore i can swap off and always have damage output uh, respective of what enemies i'm up against and then lastly we have the hunter cloak and so the hunter cloak comes with time dilation which just gives us longer duration of time for our armor charges we have reaper which gives us more orbs of power and then we also have our bomber which reduces grenade cooldown so all this together culminates into a build that plays around defense speed and lethality we want to make sure that we are always applying pressure with our respective aspects and also utilizing weapons to give us our orbs to therefore play defensively with our frost armor and because of the longer duration of time that we have with regards to our armor we can therefore make use of weapons that really take advantage of damage output really frequently burst damage for example like i said wave splitter dead messenger fourth horseman all of these can play well into the overall build as a whole and then we'll give you a closer look at the journal one more time this really hasn't changed as much but we still have the expanding abyss here which states that void sources deal increased damage to weakened targets so this plays well into snare bomb as i mentioned before shield crush while you have frost armor this helps us to give more recharge ability to our melee and deals increased damage and also when i'm amplified or radiance my grenade recharges faster and deals increased damage so this plays well into everything that we have because we have radiant orbs so we're doing more damage here we have galvanic armor because we're always going to be amplified through our arc abilities and void hegemony is always good because it gives us an overshield while we have weakening targets activated and that comes into our snare bomb Sh creeping chill plays into stasis that blast plays into strand and then everything else is basically an option but the the more important facets here really comes down in the creeping chill studded blast wood hegemony expanding abyss shield crush reading orbs and galvanic armor those are the ones you, you really want to be focusing on for this build because that's really gonna bring everything together as a whole to give you that nice balance between offense and strong defense so in the end this build is fantastic i'm still refining it as you know we move forward there's still a lot for me to uncover and unravel but i will say that just based on my testing alone and just experience thus far i really feel the build has some long-term potential and the more we build into it i hope that bungie can give us some more fundamentals weapons bungie if you're watching this give us a bow with fundamentals give us a pulse rifle or something just give us more fundamentals weapons because prismatic is really cooking and these weapons really do help in that area so all that being said folks thank you for being here and tuning in this far really appreciate it all that being said new warriors stay strong keep fighting and may the force be with you all always take care of yourselves i'll see you again very soon on the next episode of new builds peace